Okay, so a quick look at an ASTM to give you some information on how to extract the right information. So this is the approximate test, uh, standard test method for approximate analysis of cold and coke. It's the macro thermogravimetric technique, which is what we're using. It's D7582-15. Uh, if you're looking at this in a year or so's time, a newer one will be available. Um, so that was last um, approved in 2015. Make sure you're using uh, the most current one. So the STMs have multiple components. The scope isn't particularly useful. It tells you that in this case, it's a moisture of altar matter, uh, ash yield and fixed carbon by calculation. Um, that's about all that really tells you. So not particularly useful. It does tell you other ASTMs that are associated and you'll find out for this particular suite of things, many of them are interconnected, that you need both the approximate and the ultimate analysis or the approximate and the calorific value to work your way through the process and manipulate the, da the data. The summary of the test method is reasonable. Um, it tells you that it goes through what I'm getting out of looking at this is that we're using approximately uh, one gram is used. And that the volatile is determined after heating to 950 degrees C. And that particular duration is for seven minutes. This is quite historic um, for these particular assignments. Uh, still being utilized, however. Uh, moisture is determined from mass loss when heated under very specific conditions, and we'll get to those specific conditions, and there's more on this information related to temperature and time um, in the procedure, which is what you'd put into the volatile matter. Sorry, the procedure, which is what you would put into the theory section. Um, all right, running through this. Um, don't overly use this, the significance and use. It, most often it is very flippant in its uh, use. It doesn't tell you a great deal of information, which is why you have to go to uh, the books. Um, here's an example of use. It's used in conjunction with the air dry test for other analytical results to as received basis. So used in manipulations. Um, that's a definition and of course you're writing your report as if you're an employee for a company so if you're doing coal analysis you are either a coal company or a coal user so your boss is boss who you're writing certainly abstract for and some other pieces does not need to know these simple definitions right so the the, the, the use is not a definition right and this doesn't tell me enough information about how it's uh, used um, which is why you go to books. So parameter for cold cleaning, certainly that's one use. Um, it's used in ultimate analysis for correction of the oxygen, um, material balances, gasification, liquefaction, uh, in calculating um, load and ESPs, et cetera, et cetera, erosion rates. And so uh, one of the things that is very evident is we want you to use the data. And so you don't have to use it in a particular manner, uh, obviously in the, perhaps the most obvious manner in most cases, but there are many different ways to utilize the uh, data and knowing that is a key point and not, not only knowing that, but then being demonstrating that you are indeed an engineer and you can make decisions and you can make recommendations and you can suggest manipulations um, along those ways, those manners. Uh, volatile, coke yield, purchasing, selling. You're going to get more information from a book uh, letting you know how these various components work. The apparatus is uh, quite useful. It says the furnace must be capable of this particular heating rate from ambient to uh, 950 degrees C. Again, that's the sort of information that would go into theory. Uh, the precision there is four decimal places. So earlier we said accurately, approximately, sorry, earlier it was said approximately one gram, and that's put into the instrument. Um, but it is then, and in, within the instrument, uh, the mass is determined to four decimal places. 
language. They're not cups, they are crucibles. And you want to be uh, using that um, terminology. Covers, again, you want to use that terminology. Um, all the gases here are 99.5% purity. For ultimate, we'll use a higher level of purity. The sample uh, will pass a um, 60 uh, mesh sieve, and we will talk more about that in um, the lecture and um, in a later lab, very probably. But you don't just put coal in, it has to be a representative sample, and the particle size is controlled um, so it behaves appropriately. Don't worry about the preparation of apparatus for this. This is just on startup of the very um, first use. Um, don't worry about calibration. Uh, calibration is more important when you get to um, the ultimate analysis. So procedure, again, this is going to be helpful for your um, theory. All right, you've got approximately one gram. And again, it's supposedly written in... Um, Technical terms, past tense, it's, it's not the methods. You're not giving instructions in the theory, you're explaining how the instrument works. And so it's about, uh, you know, approximately one gram of minus 60 mesh uh, coal um, placed in a uh, crucible within the um, uh, TGA, uh, thermogrammetric analyzer. For moisture, you've got this 107 plus or minus three degrees Celsius. So again, about 110 degrees Celsius, 110 roughly, but um, in the theory, you would use the appropriate values. Uh, this is an interesting detail, I'm gonna underline it, but again, if you can throw in some details, it really shows that you know your material, right? That the gas is going through such that it's replaced um, the volume um, of, of, of the firmest volume air per minute. So it gives you a rate of flow to ensure you're sweeping the produced uh, volatiles or moisture um, into uh, uh, the exhaust system. So you get an appropriate mass. For volatile uh, matter, uh, you add covers. Um, the moisture is done without covers. And so there's a process where it does the moisture analysis until it gets constant weight, opens up, you put the covers on, it reweighs it. Um, again, we're on an inert atmosphere, it goes through again these different um, flow rates per minute, which allows us to sweep things away. And that's a little different than the earlier one. Um, so we go to 950 plus or minus 20 degrees Celsius in a 20 minute uh, time period. Again, that's that heating rate. Um, it's very easy to heat things at uh, room temperature and, and get that sort of controlled heating rate. It gets much more challenging for the instrument manufacturers when you're in the 900, 920, 30 uh, degrees uh, Celsius range. Um, it holds its temperature for seven minutes. The weight loss then is recovered as seven, uh, is recorded as the volatile matter. Not volatiles, volatiles are different. Volatile matter is the term for these um, gases that are released under this very specific heating condition for these particular sized uh, cold particles, minus uh, 60 mesh. Um, we do have popping challenges. And again, these are things that you can uh, read, um, read about in books. And the cover helps prevent loss of material. Once the volatile matter is done, then it's cooled. This allows the covers to be removed. And again, we do that safely using um, uh, tongs and we also have gloves. Um, and then it needs to, again to go to an additional temperature. Um, furnace atmosphere goes to oxygen or air. We 
reach a 950 degrees Celsius. Again, this is a nice detail that shows you know what you're talking about. These are controlled. Um, it varies if it's uh, oxygen or air. Um, and that'll give you the ash yield. So what else can we use in the, um, this particular piece? If you go and uh, look at the calculation interpretation of the results, these are the equations that allow you to do the conversions. And so uh, very simple um, calculations, but very commonly done. Uh, the report is very helpful, tells you what you should uh, typically report. Sometimes I have additional um, requests. Um, precision and repeatability are uh, something we'll come back to. Um, as well as bias. So not particularly key. Um, keywords are helpful for doing searches within books. And so I would use those as well. Again, sometimes you're going to see uh, examples of how to show the data. Like that. the end material can be useful as well. So that's how you utilize the uh, ASTM. You're picking out the technical details. Again, part of the, um, uh, the summary, the apparatus and the regions and the procedures come together to allow you to work out the, uh, the theory section, right? How the instrument works. Um, you also get in the theory section, the calculations or manipulations of the data, and that goes there as well. For the methods, you're assuming that someone can know, knows how to use the instrument. And so it's very simple. What are the samples? What is the instrument in accordance to what ASTM and what corrections, manipulations were performed um, along with the sample information. So um, that's pretty much how to extract useful information from an ASTM.